Psalms chapter 47. <clears throat> to the chief musician, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Like it's been for the last few psalms. This goes to the chief, the one that's ahead of all the musicians. For the, the, the Korah was the son of the, uh, the tribe of Levi, the priest. Oh, clap your hands. Job 27, 23. Lamentations 2, 15. Or interesting verses to look on that. You want to see clap your hands. The other places you find clap hands in the Bible is the trees. He said, well, we clap our hands in the church. Read Job and read Lamentations. But here, it's a rejoicing, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Well, in our church, we clap our hands and we shout. With the voice of triumph or with the voice of flesh? You do it really for the Lord or you do it just to, for people to notice you? You know, Jesus said there are people that go out and they'll go on the street corner and I'm going about to pray. That ain't for the Lord. I've heard of churches where they get these, these uh, I don't know what you call them, but offering dances. You know, they'll play the band for the $1, then for the $5, and then the $10 line. And they go all the way up to, you know, that one guy that gives 100 or $200 and he's the only one. Oh, look at him. It's why do you do it? You do it for a show or you do it for the Lord? Do you do that in your own private list when you're alone and there's no one but you and God? I'm not against raising your hands and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's in the Bible. It's scriptural. But is that something that you and the Lord do together? Alone. No one's watching you. For the Lord most high is terrible. And that's not, you know, mean, wicked, terrible God that people think he is. That means, wow, look at what he's done. Look at all the wonderful things he's done in Egypt to get his people out. Look what God has done in the realm of science. Man doesn't even understand what gravity is. Why is there gravity on this itsy-bitsy little planet, but there's none on the moon? He is a great capital K king over all the earth. And wait till he's a great king over the earth in the millennium. Then you're going to clap your hands and then you're going to shout. Terrible what the Lord did when in his second advent. Never mind the first advent as a baby. Wait till you see what he does when he comes back. And how wonderful his army is behind him. You know, the tribulation period is seven years. Now, we don't know if, as soon as the church is raptured out, if it begins. I mean, there may be a delay in time there. But can you imagine a Christian today witnessing to Jewish people? And seven years later, <laughs> that's the guy who was in Jerusalem witnessing to us. That'd be interesting. Then again, they may not know what we look like. We'll be like we'll be like Christ, the Bible says. But imagine what the Lord will do with the voice and the rod in his hand, the voice of fire, the word of God coming out of his mouth. That would be a terrible. When he takes the Antichrist and the false prophet and casts them into hell and takes the Satan and locks him up for a thousand years. That's a terrible God. And I don't mean I mean Ooh. There's only one person to get victory over the devil. One. Even Michael said, listen, I, devil, I rebuke you in the name of God. I'm not going to say anything further. God told me to do it. I got a problem with that. You know where his throne is. That's a terrible God when he can keep Satan underbound. No one, no one can keep Satan underbound. Only God. He, God, shall subdue the people under us. At the millennium, he will. He said when he comes back, he's going to divide the nations among sheep 
and goats. The goats go into the lake of fire. <clears throat> and the nations under his feet. Those that are going to be in the millennium will be under his feet, literally, because Jerusalem is going to be high above the whole earth on a mountain. He, God, shall choose. And the reason I say these pronouns is there's an interesting study. When you mark the pronouns in your Bible, that it's God. <coughs> Gives you a greater reading. He shall choose our inheritance for us. Hold on. The excellency of Jacob. Not Gentile, not America. Whom he loved. Esau I have hated. God did not choose Ishmael. God chose Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve sons of Jacob. It doesn't even mention the, the Leah, not Leah, uh, Dinah. Jacob had a daughter, and she she's really not mentioned when it comes to the inheritance. It's the twelve sons of Jacob, Selah. Selah is a musical rest. But also, when you find the book of Psalms, you can find the second advent passage. So we've already seen the Lord coming back. This is a second advent tribulation passage. God is going up with a shout. The Lord with the sound of a trumpet. That's not us. When you go over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, it says, a trump. It doesn't say trumpet. Read your Bible. Know how to spell. A trumpet is used for an army. And guess who follows Jesus? Sing praises to God. So what are we going to be doing in the millennium? Worshiping God by praise. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king, capital K. Sing praises. Now, I've got a little thing about the Christians that I may sink your battleship and not make you happy. Nowhere is for the Christian Jesus called king. I'm sorry. He's called my savior. He's called my lord. He's called my, my husband. But he's not our king. He is a king of the Jews, Pilate told us. He will be a king over all the nations in the new heavens and earth. But he's never the king of the church. I'm sorry to break that to you, but that's scripture. In the millennia, all the people will be singing praises to the king. The king that's sitting in Jerusalem. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. In the millennium. Now to hit the, the, the southern gospel music and the uh, uh, contemporary Christian music. Sing ye praises with understanding. Oh, I got a song for Jesus. I just, you know, got these words and... But do you understand what you're singing about? Do you understand the blood atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ? There's plenty of singers out there and songwriters that do it to make money and they don't know Jesus as their Savior. But Lord, didn't I come with this top billboard song? I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. But Lord, didn't I play before churches and charge them 35 bucks? Depart from me because I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. When you sing a hymn of praise to God, do you understand what you're singing? I always use sweet hour of prayer. Now, there's two things about sweet hour of prayer of understanding. Number one, have you ever prayed for an hour? I have. Number two, do you know what sweet hour of prayer is all about? It's about the rapture. Imagine a Christian who does not looking for the uh, for the blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, singing sweet hour prayer. 
Imagine a worldly Christian doesn't pray at all in his life. You couldn't find one hour of prayer in one year in that guy. Except for to win the lottery or the horse to come in or catch a fish. That's prayers that God don't honor. When you sing a hymn, you better understand the standing. Because in uh, Matthew chapter 27, Jesus said, By every word of your mouth you will give an account. <coughs> and if you sing a hymn that you don't understand or you, words you ought not be saying, you're going to stand before Christ and give an account. When you sing, the angels sang. The angels are not singing. You are lying. Imagine the water dogs say, you know, the blood of Jesus. No, you don't believe the blood of Jesus. You believe in water baptism. You better sing your hymns with understanding completeness of what you're singing. Better come out of your own heart to sing a song. Than sing a song that somebody wrote that was out of their heart and you don't mean it and don't understand it. God reigneth over the heathen. Not right now, he's not. Go to Luke chapter with it, Luke, Matthew 4 and Mark 4. Who offered who the kingdom of the, of the earth? God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness in heaven. Not on the earth yet. The princes of the people are gathered together. Even the people of the God of Abraham. Oh, and the Ishmaelites will say, there he is, that's our father. No, read the Bible. Your father's Abram. It's not Abraham. Go back and check it. God changed Abraham's name after Ishmael. Did you ever notice that? You ever notice when God changes someone's name in their life? It's always after something. If God had not changed Jacob's name, Jacob would always be known, known as a surplanter. i got to name you Israel. For the shields of the earth belong unto the Lord. So what every scientific space movie program, the earth has got to have a shield, a force field. No, the shield of the earth is faith. That's what it says over there in uh, uh, Ephesians 6. Our shield is the shield of faith. We saw a commercial we see every once in a while when we watch. The, the earth needs a lawyer. And you, you need for me to baptize you in acid. If you think that's stupid. That you have to come to the defense of the earth. You came from the earth. Why do you think they call her mother? Because you come out of it. God made your body from the dirt that this earth is. The shields of the earth belong unto the God, the faith. Your faith belongs to God. God gave you the faith that you got. He is greatly exalted. Wait till the millennium. And you'll see how great that is. And nations that will not exalt him won't get any rain, the Bible says. Stop there. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the roar. Thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not
not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art.